If you ever wanted an enterprise platform at the lowest possible cost, well, AMD has an update for you. What's your minimum specification? If we look at the Zen 4 based enterprise CPUs, we have Genoa at the high end, we have Genoa X with Vcache, we have Bergamo with Zen 4 C cores, and then Sienna is the sort of uh, core reduced platform for telcos with fewer chiplets. Now there is a product missing in this stack and it goes back a few generations to when AMD first came out with Ryzen and Epic. Now, one element of the enterprise, especially in the small business space, is the need for consumer-like hardware, but with enterprise-level features. We're talking about ECC memory, we're talking about support, long-term support for server-based operating systems. Uh, there's additional uh, RAS features in there as well to help with the memory, and just the general things you expect for when it comes to an enterprise security platform. Now, when Epic and Ryzen were first launched, we sort of Zen 1, Zen 2, Zen 3 era, the sort of DDR4 era, there were attempts to make enterprise platforms for that fam for those families. And it involved taking what was almost you know, a consumer grade platform and trying to stick in some ECC memory, because back then DDR4, ECC and non-EC had the same pin uh, configurations. The problem was some of the server elements of the design, things like baseband management control, that's the ability to log into the system um, or diagnose it when the system isn't actually powered on, that sort of server level features, weren't there by default. AMD didn't go out of their way to design a platform in order to enable that. Now there were a couple of systems out there. Uh, the one that comes to mind especially is Tyon. They developed a, look like a very industrial motherboard. You put in a Ryzen chip, you put in uh, DDR4 memory, it supported both ECC and non-ECC, though you didn't really know if ECC was working. And it had a baseband management controller port, and it had a bunch of features uh, in the BIOS to basically go through that enterprise nature of a platform. But it wasn't officially sanctioned by AMD. Now, with Zen 4, and a DDR5, we are going down that route, and they're calling it Epic 4004. Now, Epic 4000, because it's the sort of lowest grade tier on in terms of the Epic family, and then it ends in a 4 because it's Zen 4 based, and it essentially is gonna be part of that family moving forward. What does this mean? It means that this is the platform that AMD is gonna target for the lowest cost of entry when it comes to enterprise um, silicon when it comes to being able to put a Zen 4 cores in that small business, small medium business environment for a, basically a desktop or a server uh, in enterprise but has all the features of management and ECC and everything else and what 4004 does is may is combines what looks like standard Ryzen silicon so that's a centralized iodine and two Zen 4 chiplets and ECC memory with uh, chipset support for a baseband management controller and high-end ethernet and all the things you'd expect of an enterprise platform. This means we get up to 16 cores of Zen 4 with ECC in this small form factor system. This means we have support for 65 watt processors with ECC in this, uh, in this platform. And long-term operating system support so that when people buy into this platform, they know that they're going to have uh, OS images of Windows Server that are gonna work for you know, five, seven, 10 years in advance. If we look at the typical uh, CPU specifications, it's pretty much what it looks like on the Ryzen side. We've got up to 16 cores in two chiplets. Uh, we have 64 megabytes of L3 cache. There is support for AVX 512 and VNNI and Bfloat 16. We're going up to 5.7 gigahertz single core boost. Uh, on these things. So on the PCIe side, there's 28 lanes of PCIe Gen 5. Uh, there's also 20 gig USB Type-C support, display port outputs, because don't forget you still have those uh, two compute units of RDNA2 graphics on board. Uh, so there are two DDR5 memory channels uh, with ECC, uh, up to 192 gigabytes at DDR5 5200. So this will be a JDEC spec memory as well. Um, it's not clear whether they're enabling overclocking on this. 
but the CPU itself can go from 65 watts at the low end of the family up to 170 watts. Now you could get uh, 16 core CPUs of the traditional Genoa server platform. And you know, you've got all the memory channels with that and all the PCIe lanes with such a reduced number of cores, but that means extra cost to go into that platform. So again, this is AMD's uh, uh, basically pathway into an entry level uh, system at the lowest cost of acquisition. And it's competing directly against uh, Intel's Xeon E2400 series, which is basically the same thing. Well, the, on the Intel side, you take what looks like desktop processors, um, you put in some EC ECC support, and you put it in a very uh, industrial server type uh, motherboard portfolio with baseband man management control and with all the server features uh, that you would expect. So I'm going to go through the spec sheet here. Um, so we've got everything from four cores all the way up to 16 cores, and all of these are designated by a P. You've also got the PX. These are the ones with 3D vCache. So AMD is introducing vCache into this Epic 4004 platform. So that's the 4584PX and the 4484PX. So it looks like it's definitely on the two chiplet versions for now. And we see you know, the base and the boost there. Um, you know, all the way up to 5.7, and even you know the lowest core count chip goes up to 5.1 gigahertz, and you know that's 65 watts. What's interesting here is that AMD are including also the tray prices uh, in this chart. So the top 16 core versions are 700 bucks, 699, and that includes you know the 3D vCache versions as well. Uh, the 12 core version, it, they've got a 65 watt and 120 watt. So the 65 watt is definitely going to be a more you know the power efficient version. So that's why it's only down at 429, but the vCache is a full 120 watt, so you're gonna get some high frequencies there, and that's gonna be at 600. Go all the way down to, like I said, 149 for the four core version. Uh, these all support simultaneous multi-threading, so you know, four core, eight thread, up to 16 core, 32 thread. Um, and it also has a RAID Expert 2, this is you know, the server edition, and things like a secure processor and memory encryption. Uh, and in the side-by-side -side versus the E2400, um, the way AMD is positioning it here is up to, you know, up to double the cores, uh, lower cost, lower cost per core, higher boost frequencies, higher amount of cache, better memory support. Um, and then that comes into a lot of the performance benchmarks. Um, I mean, we could go through the benchmarks here, spec in, they're saying up to 1.7x performance or 1.5x performance per dollar. It, it, and they've got, they've got a number of, um, you know, it tests for this market that are uh, meant to be meaningful, like video encoding, programmer developer, ray tracing, rendering, uh, cryptography, and for some reason they've included cryptocurrency, 2.4x better than Intel Xeon e, in case you're interested. Um, this will be sold in a mixture of systems by OEM partners. They've got the usual, uh, you know, the, the usual culprits here, Supermicro, uh, ASRock, Gigabyte, MSI, and again, uh, Tyan, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, it also looks like it'll be available in the cloud if you want a hosted service. Um, and the idea here is that it's it's a lower power installation as well versus the big Genoa chips. So hopefully it'll end up being uh, you know cheaper for the licensing, uh, cheaper for the cost of the instance in terms of you know vCPUs per hour. Um, and you know OVH Cloud seems to be the big customer here. One thing AMD is keen on pointing out is that this licensing. So if you're not familiar with this uh, segment, licensing for the uh, either the operating system or the software uh, can be as much of a cost to the platform as anything else. Um, it can even be you know higher cost than the memory, higher cost uh, than the CPU itself. So what you need to do here is minimize licensing costs. And licensing costs either come either per CPU or per socket or per portion of socket. And one of the things that AMD is going for here is the Windows Server 2022 data center and standard edition licensing. Uh, their core based licensing model uh, with 16 cores is included in the base price of that operating system. So the point is that when you buy the operating system, you're not having to you know, spend so much and only you run it on an eight core system, or if you're having a 32 core system, having to increase that licensing. Uh, their argument here is the fact that they go up all the way to 16 cores is that you can incorporate that license into the, co you know, the cost of the OS license. Essentially covers every CPU and every SKU in this stack. Now the socket these CPUs go into is going to look very much like the standard LGA 1718 socket uh, of the consumer platform. 
uh, the CPUs are going to look exactly the same on the outside instead of saying AMD Ryzen, they're going to say AMD Epic. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if AMD decides to go sample these out. I you, Usually these platforms, the motherboards can be kind of hard to get hold of as an end user. You know, you end up going to Newegg and they'll have one or two and they do tend to be on the higher end of cost of motherboards. So probably looking anywhere from about $350, $400 for these motherboards, that's what I'd expect. We've got Computex just around the corner in a couple of weeks. The fact that AMD is announcing it now means that some of those motherboard vendors that I named earlier are probably gonna have motherboards to show at the event. And if we get a chance to see them, we can take you through them as well. Um, I've, you know, I used to be a motherboard review. At one point I reviewed 55 motherboards in a year which is insane. But I got, you know, I got deep into how these boards are designed and what sort of components get put in them. And some of these server-based motherboards, you know, they're not as glamorous as consumer motherboards. Not only do you not get the fancy coloring and, you know, the RGB LEDs, um, but it's a case of, we would normally used to say uh, eight, 12, 16 phase power supply and you get a server motherboard and you'd be like, why is this six phase? And then you realize it doesn't have to support overclocking. Um, it doesn't have to support all those you know, expanded features that consumer motherboards do. And they're also prepared to pay a little bit extra for the more efficient components in some circumstances. It does depend whether you're going for you know, uh, a premium server product or a cost down server product. And I think it's the cost down server products you have to watch out for because they really do skim every 10th of a cent. Um, I'm going to see some of these, yeah, hopefully get to see some of these motherboards in Computex here in a couple of weeks. Um, but AMD Epic 4004, it's going to be interesting to see that we now have a dedicated, you know, standard, what looks like a consumer Ryzen chip, but actually has uh, ECC memory support uh, and how that affects uh, that side of the business. We have seen that uh, platforms that do support DR5 ECC are also supporting overclocking. In some certain circumstances, I do wonder if uh, this platform is going to go for that. But yeah, my minus specification here is having lots of uh, choice is, is definitely a good thing. So long may it continue. And uh, let's see if we can see find some of these on shelf in retail boxes. Uh, they, we have seen Intel do it with the Xeon E's. I really hope AMD is able to do it with these Epic 4004s.